Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaii Verse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by throwing up the shaka every time someone lets you cross the street. Let's get right into it because we got a legend <laughs> sitting across from me, and I'm so excited. You know, if you ever laughed in your life, this guy was probably the cause of some of that laughter. You know, he is a comedian, actor, radio personality <laughs> with nearly three decades of experience. He was named one of the U.S.'s top undiscovered comedians in 2019. He is recognized as one of the top Hawaii's top 100 influential Filipinos and was named Comedian of the Year as the funniest comic in Hawaii back in 2012. He was awarded the best comedy show by Honolulu Magazine and has won two Nahoku Hanohano Awards. He is the only local comedian to sell out the Blaisdell Arena. He has appeared in numerous television programs, including The Wayne Brady Show, Hawaii Five-O, and Magnum P.I. And no, this is not a joke. He was <laughs> elected to the city and council of you Honolulu. You forgot to say it, dude. You forgot <laughs> to say he's a favorite at the women's correctional facility. I was just about to say that. Okay, all right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I also read that you were a Golden Gloves champion boxer at age 16. Yeah, you know, true? I grew up in uh, public housing, so you had to find some sort of self-defense, or you had to run real <laughs> fast now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and this guy <laughs> is none other than the living legend himself, Augie T. Living legend? Yeah, Augie huh? Toba. Wow. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Good, man. Thank you for having yeah. me. Uh, I almost I almost ran out of bread just reading all that. <laughs> You've been, you, you did a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I've been blessed, man. I can't, I can't complain. Uh, I'm one of the few guys that, you know, at the age of 53, uh, got to do something that's so out of the box, right? And when they say you cannot teach a dog uh, new tricks, old dog new tricks, they're lying. No, yeah. Don't ever believe that because every day for me being in city council is a learning experience, sometimes frustration, Mm -hmm. But most of the time, uh, an amazing learning experience, and I hope that I can translate what I'm learning to the public because I think that's one of the biggest things um, as an elected official government we do that's poor is educating the public. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, And I'm hoping if I can achieve anything in the next three years, and believe me, I count the days every day, three years and two months is to inspire guys like you inspire guys like men who I've known for ages mm -hmm. run for office yeah. understand the process right because you become more empathetic to government you see that you can use government in ways to really help motivate people and maybe help people uh, get a hand up and not a hand out mm -hmm. uh, and then you be more aware of how bad and how much red tape there is to just put on speed bump or how do we help get homeless off the street? Yeah, and how we can help uh, police do their job, right? Because from the reason why a lot of things don't get done is because we can't even enforce stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got to find ways and get creative now in this yeah. challenging time where, you know, we saw two years of lockdown and, uh, and we're finding ways of how do we bring our economy back. And so... Uh, it's a very interesting time, mm -hmm. and I'm learning a lot, and I'm happy to be here on your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> the Hawaii Verse Podcast, episode two. We're just, I'm learning. Yeah. We're all learning. Every time I do this, I'm learning. Well, you guys doing amazing. I mean, I, I appreciate looked at it. the website. Yeah. I was like, man, I might have to do this after my <laughs> three years and two months. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure by then we'll, we'll have a pain spot for you, because right <laughs> now we're just donating our time. <laughs> But I, I love how you started off like that because it, it really shows where your heart is. You know, it, it's in the community. You know, we didn't talk about, you know, the comedy because you've had a, a very extensive career with just start, I mean, radio personality. You've been in the spotlight for almost 30 years, right? Yeah. You know, um, I think that's helped me um, to what they call, you know, getting a tough skin. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, you know, my my upbringing more than anything, uh, really helped me uh, be the person I am today because I realized uh, the importance of what government did for me and mentors and teachers mm -hmm. and coaches, yeah. you know, coming from where I grew up. It helped me um, understand that in life, there's always going to be challenges, but making tough decisions sometimes are like the real 
good decisions because mm-hmm. it's easy to take the path of uh you know whatever you ch- like you know i always tell a story i'm the oldest of five brothers i have a stepbrother above me um i love them all to death we came from the same household we heard the same things that my dad you know, told us, my dad only went up to the fourth grade. You know, if you work hard, you can get ahead in mm-hmm. life. You know, you go to school. You know, all the things that a parent should yeah. say to their kids. But we all chose different paths. My older brother, career criminal. Mm-hmm. Right? Could have easily gone to the path that I did. You know, it was a lot harder. Right? But he chose the easy path. Mm-hmm. Sometimes... No look easy because, oh, you like live that life? Yeah. But really, it's a decision, yeah. right? It's like a need now, right now. I got to have this now. And then my brother below me was one of the earliest casualties of ice in Hawaii. He shot himself, oh, you know, right. uh, when he was 18 years old. He had so much to live for. Mm-hmm. Could have maybe done some amazing things, but he chose that, that route. You know, and my other brothers, you know, we struggle, but, you know, we took the long and hard road of life and i think we all came out how it sh- whatever you know that's it's, it's, our destiny yeah exactly right yeah you learn along the way and yeah. i'm learning i'm continuous continuously learning about you know how i can be a better person and and um find solutions coming up with good partnerships meeting mm-hmm. good people that have the same heart and the same passion to, you know, make changes. Yeah, that's awesome. I, mean, I can see you, you're a guy who looks for solutions, not excuses. Ah, <laughs> we can do that all day, right? Yeah. It's so, easy. I mean, guys, I make excuses every day with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> see, I told you, you guys going to laugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I was going to ask you to, you know, tell a, tell your life story. But mm. I, I think you touched upon it a little bit. Uh, but... You, you talked about some some influences, so I kind of want to know who who inspired you. Like who who are some of your influences in life? So if we talk about life in general, of course, you know, uh, my dad wasn't the, you know, uh, the most loving. Uh, I just saw this guy work every day. So when I when I when I think about my dad, I just think of his work ethic. Mm-hmm. My mom and dad they weren't educated. Uh, but they work hard yeah. and make sure that they provide it. And that was important for me to see, yeah, because I knew early on growing up in public housing, uh, I could easily just be complacent and, and just stay there. Like I go back to my old neighborhood. I still see some of my friends. I go, man, when are you going to get out of that funk, my friend? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just, again, making decisions and making choices, right? And... Uh, for me, watching my dad work hard and, you know, just barely making it, that's not the life I wanted to live. So I was going to do whatever I can to get the right education, work hard. And I knew because it was instilled in me that if you bust your ass, you can get somewhere in life. Yeah, yeah I believe So that. I believe, you know, my dad was a great influence. Uh, uh, Miss Murakami, one of my teachers in school that inspired me to, you know, uh, really step outside the box and use a talent that I I knew I had. I always wanted to be a mm-hmm. stand-up comic. I saw Andy Bumatai at the, in the fourth grade, yeah. and I was blown away. I was like, that's what I like doing in life, right? And I was the guy that, you know, entertained my classmates. Mm-hmm. Uh, He's a class clown. Wasn't so much the class clown. clown. It was more like, you know, the guy that irritated everybody. <laughs> right? uh, so, oh, it was me and my family towards my siblings. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so... <laughs> I was that guy. You know, people said that I was a class clown. I don't, I don't remember being a class clown. I, I remember uh, being asked to enter this speech contest because I was flunking in school. And I remember Miss Murakami. And I tell this story a lot because I think it's so important that we, you know, we give the teachers who doing an amazing job the credit. Oh, yeah. A lot of it, you know. And Miss Murakami, she... Um, she was the first one that said that uh, that I was special and that I uh, I had something to offer the world and that I can be amazing. Yeah. I be- and the biggest thing that she said is like, I believe in you. 
Yeah. And, you know, when you're from strong words right there. I yeah, just got man, skin when in, I, you know? when you know you come from public housing and you see the challenges in life and you're looking for that in your parents, you know, I wanted that's the kind of stuff I wanted to hear from my dad, mm-hmm. but I understand he wasn't that guy. Yeah. And for somebody who wasn't my family to look at me in the eye and tell me those words, that really changed the way I saw life, mm-hmm. right? And then she helped me through the process. You know, with this speech mm. tournament, and I end up winning. Hey, end up winning this thing, and I was like, you know, maybe this is something that I should do. Maybe I was destined to do this when I first mm. saw Bumatai yeah. in the fourth grade. You know, and then all through high school, uh, I did entered speech clubs. Um, and like you said, I boxed all through my intermediate and high school um, life, and my boxing coach. And my drama coach was two guys that really uh, motivated me to want to be a performer. Mm-hmm. And my coach told me every day that if you was the first in the gym and the last to leave, you was going to do amazing things. That's the mindset to have. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I for boxing for me showed me what America looked like yeah. because I was able to leave Kalihi to go see different parts of the country go to foreign countries, you know, doing, at that time, what I love doing, boxing, mm-hmm. competing. and uh, Performing, it, in a way, in yeah, front of people, getting in really front of people. set the mindset, mm-hmm. you know, down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gave me this amazing discipline. And, you know, when I was bored and when I knew I couldn't dedicate myself because all my life I was told, you have to do it this way, you have to dedicate your life, and if you cannot... And you're gonna half ass it, don't do it. Mm-hmm. So with boxing, at some point, it just felt like I was just going through the motion and I quit. Oh, and wow. uh never looked back. You know, and I sometimes I I walk into gyms and I smell them and I get flashbacks. Mm-hmm. But um I'm the kind of guy like if I cannot fully commit and I cannot dedicate myself, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, your heart has to be in. Yeah. yeah. In everything. Yeah. I did that with jobs, mm-hmm. uh, radio stations that I mm-hmm. worked on when I felt like I don't like belong here. I leave because I always believe. I believe in the analogy when one door closes and one door doesn't open. Yeah. If, you, if your heart is in the right place, right? Yeah. So, yeah, man, I just, at, at some point, boxing was done for me. And then. Uh, Next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I, but real quick, because I feel like I wouldn't be one local brother if I didn't ask you where you grad. Oh, I, grad- I graduated from Farrington High School. Okay, okay, okay. Right down the road from where we had. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, with the, with the boxing, and uh, it taught me a lot of self-discipline. You know, it talk- taught me definitely hard work. Mm-hmm. It taught me about, like, uh, <laughs> that it's okay to lose. Like, I learned more mm-hmm. losing than I did winning. Yeah. I remember my losses than all my winnings, and I had... Almost 140 something fights. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. like with anything, even like how people grab onto the negative thing. You could do 100 positive things, you do one bad thing, and that's what they focus on. Yeah. And I remember yeah. the seven that I lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember how it felt. I remember uh, how I felt emotionally. I remember how I felt when the guy punched me in the face. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I got knocked down a couple <laughs> times. Uh, but those are the fights that I remember. I don't remember all the great victories. Yeah. I mean, I do, but like the losses, right? And they how I felt out. and yeah. like why that's not going to ever happen again. Yeah. You know, taught me the most and the best lessons in life. Yeah. I, the failures, that's how we succeed. You know, when we, if you don't learn from them, then they're just a mistake. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. But so it's interesting because it seems like you've learned a lot from, you know, your whole entire life. But did you realize that when you were young or only as you got older? Because like, I'm, st- I'm still pretty young, but I've learned a lot just as maturing. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of life lessons. And just from, from me here compared to me, I don't know, even three, four years ago, it's so <laughs> different, you know? Yeah, I know it's going to continue to be yeah. different and continue to change. So, you know, uh, yeah, man, like I said, uh, I've always been motivated, you know, for whatever um, reason, call it destiny, mm-hmm. call it, you know, saying things in the universe. Like I said, right? Yeah. I always 
When I first saw Andy Bumatai, I was like, I'm going to be a stand-up comic. I don't know how. You didn't tweet it. No, man. <laughs> we never have tweets. <laughs> We just kind of you know, say that. <laughs> you wrote it on I mean, your mirror. <laughs> dream, pray, you yeah. Know. Uh, but yeah, it's funny how that all came about. You know, like uh, I worked at a hospital for my, sixteen years. For sixteen yeah. years, I worked at Capilani Medical. You know, and I had to do that because I made my girlfriend pregnant. I discovered mm. girls at sixteen, <laughs> and I realized. You know, I had a scholarship to go school, you know, and my dad was like, I ain't watching your kid. My dad yeah. was, you know, tough love was like, man, it's your responsibility. You got to go work now. And I'm glad that happened, honestly, because, again, it's another lesson in life, yep. right? I, I don't regret having my son at an early age. Uh, sometimes I go, man, would have been nice if I went to some of these proms and some of the things that every high school kid uh, look forward to. Mm -hmm. But I understood my responsibility, and I always tell kids or students, like, make sure you make the right choices. And if you go make wrong choices, take responsibility. That's, that's what a lesson's yeah. at. Accountability. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you knew what the possibility was going to be, yeah. you know? And I knew, like, man, I had all these possibilities, you know, uh, maybe going to the Olympic trials, mm -hmm. you know, maybe... Making a lot of money as a professional, you know, if I applied myself, if I didn't take the easy route mm -hmm. or whatever, a lot of could ofs. Yeah. Right. But the cool thing is that uh, I believe everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I got on the bus every day from YNI, went to work at Kapiolani, and I, uh, on the weekends, I would go to different comedy clubs, watch comics, and then one day they had an open mic, and I signed up. It's and game then the over rest after that. Is history. Yeah. I even remember my first joke was a doodle -doo joke. <laughs> tell it, tell yeah, it. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell the doodle -doo joke. Uh, I talked about like not having the stomach to drink milk. You know, I couldn't drink milk, and uh, this Samoan cafeteria lady uh, was like, "Don't waste your food." How come you waste your food? Drink, drink your milk. Eat your food. I was like, I can't, I can't drink, drink your milk. And I'm like, I, I cannot drink milk. And I'm like, don't waste the milk. So I, I just, I tasted it. And I was like, already my stomach yeah, was going gurgly. off, right? And I just remember that day I was in class. And I, you know when your stomach cramping up? You know where it's like so bad, right? Like you stand up for nothing just so yeah, that you, yeah. know, you can, your yeah. stomach can, yeah, you open up your belt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I remember standing up and all my classmates going, sit down, Augie. <laughs> and you know, shut up. Right? And I, it was got got so bad. Come on, that I, I had to lie. I was like, Miss Miss Wong, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go make shishi. You notice the closer you get to the bathroom, though, yeah, yeah. The, your elastic start stretching, <laughs> right? I was almost there. I saw the doorknob. As soon as I grabbed, blam, blast in my pants, wow. right? And of course, automatically, I started thinking about, wow, I don't want to get caught. Yeah. If I get caught, my life is over. So I started thinking quickly, like, wrap my babies, I go flush them down the toilet. Hide the evidence. Yeah. Flush them down the toilet. You ever, like, flush anything down the toilet and then the water just kind of... <laughs> That's what I was like, thinking. You see, the, you see the thing go down and all of a sudden, whoa, yeah. water didn't stop and the water started overflowing, right? The water started overflowing, and at that moment, the recess bell ring. Oh, no. Right? So now all my classmates are walking in the bathroom. I'm standing there pretending like I don't know what's going on, but it, it was, ooh, get water. Come get water on the ground, right? right? And the custodian run in, and I just had to be in there just to make sure, like, you know, like, everything cool. But then a custodian came in, and he had this industrial... I don't know, some pump. Yeah. Hey, whoa, wah. And that's when my whole life was in slow motion at that <laughs> moment. You know what I mean? I, I just remember like watching the water go in and then coming out. And when it was coming out after he, he did that plunging, my underwear started floating <laughs> to the top of the, you know, yeah, top of yeah. the water. And I saw him put on his rubber gloves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like when Sergio, yeah, yeah, but like it was in slow motion. I was like looking, everything was just, uh, and all the kids was looking in the toilet bowl. You know, it was like a movie. Yeah, and he lift up my babies, 
And because I'm the oldest of five, my mom used to put our names. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and everybody was like, oh, get this, your bibs. And I was doodle boy. Oh, no. From fourth grade on. I remember when I graduated from Farrington High School, getting my diploma. After I grabbed my diploma for walk off the stage, all my classmates was like, doodle boy. <laughs> I was like, wow. That was my first joke that I told wow. the audience. And the comedy club owner who was Jewish from New York was like, I don't understand anything you're saying, <laughs> but you're making, and had locals in the audience. I was making them laugh. And he said, that's good enough. You come back. And the rest is history. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so as a comedian, you kind of just have to use all those bad moments and turn them into good stories because that, that's what I've learned in life too, you know? Yeah. Like I've had like, so I was in Peace Corps. I was in Madagascar for a couple of years. Wow. So, you know, I had like surgery over there. I got like my appendix removed and you know in the moment you're like oh this sucks like everything's moving in slow motion but then at the end you're like well that was kind of cool i mean i survived it i got through and now it's yeah. a good story yeah absolutely and you know and i think i'm so blessed bro like you know 30 years of being in a business that's not easy oh no especially a, in in that business it's a tough yeah. to stay relevant yeah to stay uh and still you know, put Ocoles in the seats. Yeah. It's a hard job. I mean, I wish social media was around back then. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I probably could have sold the blaze there out like 17 times. Yeah. Uh, and we had to do it the old school way. You had to put posters up on yeah. walls and, you know, call your friend and then call yeah. their friends. But, you know, I think when you're up on stage and you're being as real as possible, right? And people like you know when you hear somebody speak, you go, "Wow, that guy's a liar." Mm -hmm. You know, I've been able to tell a great story about my life for the last thirty years that I think was relatable, and people appreciated the fact that it was clean, that it went across the board with all ages, from kids to yeah. mom, dads, uncle, grandma, grandpas, right? And um, so. Very thankful, man, for the 30 years. Yeah, and I, I know part of your your thing is not swearing, right? Like, mm -hmm. to keep it clean, because a lot of people think in comedy, to be funny, you have to swear. You have right. to be, like, uh, you said these derogatory jokes or whatever it right. is. Um, but let me ask you, so how do you think the comedy changed in the last decades? You know, like, r right now, mm -hmm. compared to, I don't know, even 10, 15 years ago, like all the the political correctness mm -hmm. movement, cancel culture. Yeah. Um. But here we're we're in Hawaii, where we're a melting pot of so many different cultures. Yeah. It's so diverse. You know, that's kind of our identity to like sure. mix in our Portuguese jokes, mm -hmm. Filipino jokes, and but nowadays everyone's so sensitive, right? Everybody's sensitive, and I think that's the reason. Part of the reason why, uh, for me, taking a step back, uh, a couple of years ago, um, and really try to focus on something different, something I think you know, could be very impactful in the community. I always loved, what people don't know is that even despite being a comic, uh, you know, I always gave back and I never ever talked about it. You know, I don't talk about uh, the years of going into schools, the years of raising money for churches, mm -hmm. sports teams, clubs, because I was told you don't need, just do them. Right? Mm -hmm. And you'll live a blessed life. And I honestly believe that. You know, um, but I started seeing and feeling um, it was getting harder. You know, um, yeah, a like lot the, of political the, the, the comedy landscape. Yeah, was getting, and, you know, a lot of people watching their comedy through a phone, mm -hmm. you know, compared to, you know, paying some money and going to a show. Yeah. Um, and, I did all of that, and I had to pay for put on a wig, mm. you know, uh, be a character, and be on TV weekly. You know, I had to pay yeah. for that. Now, I, you know, people go, oh, well, you know, do that. I mean, <laughs> you know, the, the phone, yeah. you can hit so much people. I go, because I'm 53 <laughs> years old. All the things that I see the kids doing, putting on a wig, looking at the camera, going, yeah, how come you never do that? Oh, why you never do that? I did that yeah. when... Phone wasn't around. I had to actually pay one guy, had to write one script, had to do it in a couple takes because it costs money. Now you can be in front of your phone and yeah. do several breaks 
and then you know you're an overnight sensation. You put the best part of it. You're not on stage live, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, I, I totally yeah. get that. So like you know you talk about paying your dues, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it it took hard before it became even. I got noticed or popular like and 15 years into my career nobody remember me from when i had to go to an uncle's house and they gave me plate <laughs> not money they gave me plate yeah you yeah. know what i mean nobody knows that nobody knows the nights we only had five people in one room and you had to make those five people laugh yeah nobody knows of the times where like i would open for legends and bomb yeah, I was gonna ask, have you ever bombed? Like, oh. did you have a worst performance? It's so many. Uh, <laughs> well, so how many. did you bounce back from them? No, you don't. You just kind of you like, roll with the punches. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like a loss, right? There, one couple times, I remember there's a place called Oasis. I was opening for Booga Booga, uh, and Andy Bumatai came on stage. Uh, some other like and some of the legends they just happened to be there that night Henry Capono mm -hmm. in the back and the who's who in Hawaii entertainment uh, they just saw a couple of legends go up on stage making everybody laugh and they go oh we're like you guys meet this young comic mm -hmm. and just bombing bro wow yeah in front of like in front of the, the greats <laughs> yeah so I remember going outside sitting in a on the street and Bumatai coming up to me and goes, bro, and all the times I've seen you perform except for this one, you kill, bro. But I remember saying, I don't like do this anymore. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> because not so much. It was because of the people in the audience. Mm -hmm. Right? So whenever I see Henry Capono and like any of my shows, I go, you're in jinx because I remember <laughs> you for my first show. And I promise, every time Henry Capono is there, I bomb. <laughs> so there's one time on the Big Island. The Henry Capono effect. <laughs> yeah. At one time on the Big Island, uh, I was working for Mayor Billy Kinoy. And yep. Henry Capono. Great guy. Great yeah, guy. Yeah. Henry Capono was the performing uh, headliner mm -hmm. at one of the events that we did yeah. on the Big Island. And I did a bit using all his songs as I introduced him. And I killed for the first time. And I go, Henry. It's broken. Yeah. yeah. The curse that of a Henry good. Capono has broken. <laughs> yeah, it was funny because it was a whole, I introduced him using all his CNK songs and he was yeah. dying. The whole audience was dying and I was like, who finally, you guys don't know, every time I've seen Henry, I bomb completely. Yeah. And uh, we just started laughing. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have many of those. Yeah. Dude. Oh Many yeah, of those. that's awesome. Because as a comedian, you really have to be resilient just to keep going on. And now I kind of enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different now as a an older guy. You know, you uh, you know that not every night is the same night, uh, and you know you're funny, mm -hmm. right? So you do things to test the water and yeah. see what happens. You know what I mean? Like, and if work, work. If no work, yeah. then. You know, you move on next. <laughs> yeah. So what, what what makes something like what what is what makes something funny? What you know? What's honestly, the best tips to be funny? I I tell people whatever makes you laugh at that instinct will probably make somebody laugh if you tell it the way you saw it and felt it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like you know how I get. A lot of your friends that's so funny you go, hey, you should do comedy. Yeah, but, but it's then, in the moment, right? It's like the way correct, they act. It's they, physical right. humor. But you put them on stage, uh, not the uh, same uh, guy. Uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> not the same guy, right? Uh, so you got to find your voice. So getting on stage a lot helped me early mm -hmm. on, right? And being, you know, uh, in front of big audience, like I became Capena's opening act when Capena was hot. Like I was opening... Opening for them and get like three, four thousand people. Ooh. So people, you know, found out about me pretty quick, and I'm so thankful that I got to do that. Uh, but I always tell people, whatever made you laugh, you know, at that moment is, and if you could tell it the same way you mm -hmm. saw it, you know, uh, it's a, probably gonna make somebody laugh because, you know, we're comedians are. Uh, Mirrors, we are, mm -hmm. we are a reflection of society. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I started doing Vegas. Uh, 
I signed a two year deal with the Plaza Hotel. So I go back every couple of months and I do a Vegas show, right? And I did one just when everything opened up and I walked through Fremont. Mm hmm. And people wasn't wearing masks. I was wearing my mask because, you know, on the mainland, everything's open, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But my opening line at the Plaza Hotel was like, ah, oh, man, I walked Fremont like several. I think I caught COVID like six times <laughs> and VD <laughs> because the place is filthy. So I took all my shots and a penicillin. So everybody's safe in there. So like, but like, because I was thinking that, right? So how you say it, uh is what usually make people laugh. Like mm -hmm. for it's me, it's real. That's yeah. Hard. No, yeah. I took always the innocence of local people, right? Like I like playing the moat guy, you know, the cousin or the uncle you know, President like, Ulufale. Yeah, <laughs> because we all have a friend like that. I always put them in those situations. Like, what if? What if? Or like I was talking to somebody about the mandate early on, mm -hmm. right? Mandate. You know, you have to really explain that to some of your local friends. Like, it's not men. Well, all these everybody gay nowadays. No, mm -hmm. no, that means you cannot do them. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, so, so, so. You know what I mean? Like, uh, but then you always get that guy, right? When uh, when the, when the corona came out, a lot of my friends were like, "Oh, bro, so you cannot drink corona anymore." But like, how these guys just coming in and just you know messing everything up for yeah. me? You know what I mean? Like, but like. We know these guys. Yeah, We've yeah. laughed at these guys. And not because they said or they planned out something funny. It was just naturally done a way that you and I relate to. Yeah, you that, know? That, that's, that's so interesting because like how you say it's a mirror. It's like basically you're you're impersonating all these people we've grown up with. The uncles, Correct. the cousins, the brothers, the aunties. And believe it or not, it resonates. I never thought of it like and that. And it resonates on the mainland yeah. too. See, I was about to ask that. Does it translate I always told local people, comedy? I never changed my act. Mm -hmm. So people always ask me, well, you change your act when you go mainland. You know, I think it's so important for us to teach and help people understand that we're much more than just, you know, people live in the middle of the ocean that, you know, cater to tourists. Yeah. You know, we hardworking local people. We're the sixth, I think, 13th largest uh, city, you know, in America. Mm -hmm. You know that per capita? Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. Dude, we're a big oh, city. Oh, per capita, yeah. Yeah, we're a big city. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we get the same challenges like everybody else, but for some reason, they think that we just, there's a bunch of people in the middle of the ocean, right? Yeah. We heard all the stereotypes, but I always felt like if I'm going to be my true self, even on the mainland, I got to be that guy. I don't care if you don't understand. I'm not catering to you. I'm catering to the people who are coming to see me because they like see something different. Yeah. You can watch Comedy Central and see the same kind of comics, you know, 24 hours a day. But to see a Hawaii comic that's unique, that has the same funny stories. Mm-hmm. That's diverse. What do you think guys like Joe Coy? What do you think guys mailing comics come in and they sell out and do one local joke? And we go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, we, that's the first time I yeah, heard somebody the, say slippers. Or talk about Yoda's. <laughs> right. So, because we see like, wow, they caught on. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. We're going we're gonna to support somebody that caught on. Like, so I don't get mad like, hey, more comedy, more better, mm -hmm. right? More people. But like, man, I look at guys who I admire that did the same thing. Yeah. That talk about the same thing. There was They will never sell out auditoriums because they have that one joke. But they did it, bro. Mm -hmm. They did it way before all these guys that are selling out stadiums. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I honor those guys. You know, and that's why, like, for me, being who I am, coming from this island, is special. And if I got to change my, because we've been told when we were in school, that in order for making a life, you got to be in a certain way, you got to talk in a certain way, exactly. you got to act in a certain yeah. way. Dress right? like them. Correct. Yeah. And I kind of believe that, but I think depending on where you're at in life and what you're going to become and what you have to offer. So I had to offer... And what I offered the world was a uniqueness about Hawaii. My mom is Portuguese. My mm -hmm. dad is Filipino. I get Samoan friends. I have funny Filipino stories. I have crazy 
uncles. I have gay sons. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, how is that not relatable? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. But we're told and we believe that. And you hear local people tell you the same thing. Oh, oh, you change your act. Hey, if I was in St. Louis and you came and just because you saw my name on a billboard, right? And you walk in and you see me do a completely Waikiki act, talking good English. Yeah. You'd be like, ah, yeah, sell out. out. Yeah. Sell out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Come on, bro. We have something special. I believe that. We, we have yeah. something unique. That's why they come. Yeah. They're not coming because, you know, they're looking at the mountains. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. But they're coming because we have this aloha spirit, this open mindedness, this, mm-hmm. you know, this amazing re- resiliency uh, to live in a place that we can't even afford anymore. Yeah, exactly. Right? We got to wake up every day yeah. and kiss people's asses, bro, just to make ends meet. Yeah, and that's not the Hawaii I grew up in. Mm-hmm. That's not you the know? Hawaii I envision in the future. Yeah. I mean, especially like what we're doing with Hawaii, we're trying to get everybody to support local and showcase the talent we have. And when I say support local, not just businesses, but artists, yeah. perform like everything. Yeah, because like you said, we don't gotta um, conform to them. That's right. You know, we 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 just got we gotta stand Dude, on the pedestal. I so. tell that all the time in my yeah. act. I say we. That's right. We have to conform to you guys. Mm-hmm. You guys can handle. Just give me 45 <laughs> minutes of your time. And if you need me to translate after this, we'll go talk story. I'm yeah. going to help you out. But in the meantime, enjoy something different. Yeah. yeah. Right? And People I so believe used that. People the same thing. Yeah. Right. I believe yeah. that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. You know what I mean? Uh, and I, you know, just the same way, you know, as a politician now, or I call myself a public servant. I don't like calling <laughs> myself a politician. <laughs> Because uh, I know how that look like. Yeah, the um, negative connotation to that. Um, you know, how's my train of thought? Uh, mm. I said how if in the three and a half, three years and two months I get in office, if I can inspire you to run or people watching this podcast to run, and don't think you cannot mm. because, you know, oh, I only even graduate high school. You can. If you're passionate about your community, if you're passionate about uh, changing things for the good, right? That are gonna affect everybody. Run. Mm. In fact, if you're watching this and you live in my district, run against me. I don't care. You know what I mean? Because it's not a job. It shouldn't be a job. You know what I mean? It should be yeah. I coming in for serve. Yeah. If you guys want me there? I'm gonna continue. Mm-hmm. Same with comedy. And same with what we have to offer. Mm-hmm. Don't change because you know you're told you have to. No. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know what the difference between right and wrong, you know, you know, if it doesn't make you feel good, yeah. guess what? I follow you in the oh. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I hope that I was able, even by people watching this, that doing comedy on the phone and, you know, doing stand up comedy, don't change who you are. You have something to offer. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can be the guy that going to sell out arenas on the mainland because you have a story to tell about us, then right on. Mm-hmm. You know, I hope that I made uh, a difference. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In your life, and you look back and you go, but a guy never changed. Uh, mm-hmm. And he stayed true to who he was. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, I, and then I then I would live a really good life. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's what makes you likable is that you stay true to the, your, your local persona. persona. Same way like how Billy Kinoy was when he ran for office and he was the mayor. I'm from Hilo, that's why, that's why awesome. I, I mean. That guy gave me so yeah. much credibility, dude. Yeah, but yeah. We'll, we'll, we're, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> I have one more question awesome. about the, the comedy okay. comedy side of things. Is yeah. like, So what do you think about the, the local comedy scene right now in Hawaii? You know, uh, I haven't been really engaged in it because mm-hmm. there's so much on the phone. I, mean, I know. Yeah, all skit acts. Yeah. Guys like Tomua, yeah. you yeah. know. Um, Bring local comedy back. I right? only know, like, where when, but. <laughs> <Just kidding>. uh, <laughs> that's a great that. marketing, by, by the way. <laughs> uh, it's always been here. Yeah, I never yeah. went nowhere, but also, man. You guys heard if, that. No, but like, you know, if a, hey, you know, if there's a sense of loss or maybe. There's a disconnect, and that's a great marketing tool. 
mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah. and, uh, and that's awesome. Um, and, you know, I married a guy. He works hard. So I know, it, I know like my friend Jose does stuff around, but like I honestly, uh, if I could see more comics, the more the better, mm-hmm. you know, because I think now more than ever, um, people want to escape yeah, yeah. and laugh. You yeah. know what I mean? And, uh, dude, I did it for 30 years. I have nothing to, sh- like. You have nothing to prove. Yeah, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Uh, if I can spend an hour a week, you know, getting in front of an audience, even if it's for 10, 20, like it helps me escape now. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah. it's good, right? It's like a coping mechanism yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, you know what I mean? Like it's awesome that, you know, every generation have a new comic. So, you know what I mean? If uh, if it's Tamua, I wish him all the well. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've always been a supporter, you know. Um, and hopefully, you know, other people outside of Tamua will come out and because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Maybe you can help me. No, but I, don't I, know. I, I like what, what you said about where did it go? Because like that, that's true. Because we, we, if you want to go off that narrative of where where did local comedy go? Yeah. I mean, it's been around the whole time. Yeah. We've all seen the raps uh, videos. Yes. You know, grew up seeing Pula Ia, yeah. you, Andy Bumatai, the Brada. But it just like goes everybody. to show you, right? It just goes to show you that. Uh, uh, maybe, like, maybe it just kind of maybe flattened because it happened with me. It, I you think know, with it, social media, it, though. It, yeah, it goes with waves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, I was told at one time that I was, uh, what's that word that you use uh, when you're a guy at the moment? Some, the, some, oh, the, the spotlight effect. That or in ah, uh, oh, I remember this guy saying this in one of the newspapers. Like, uh, I was the guy for the moment, and I was like, This guy has no idea who I am. And mm-hmm. you know, I was like, I was, I took that uh, personal, like, brah, I'm not the guy for the moment. I'm going, like, for me, it's like, This is what I love doing, I'm passionate mm-hmm. about it. And we look back, he's. I'm not gonna say his name because we're good <laughs> friends now, but he still writes paper, and I, yeah. uh, I remember always calling him, calling, calling him out on it. Right, as like, uh, because even now, when you think of local comedy, right, mm-hmm. people automatically go to rap, Andy, Booga Booga, you know those guys. You know what I mean? Like I remember being interviewed and somebody saying, uh, you know, a lot of people compare you to Rap Replinger, and you know, I go, no, I'm Augie. I'm nothing like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I tell a story of where I'm from. Do I do Hawaii comedy? Absolutely. Right? But I'm not those guys. Yeah. And I think I stayed on that narrative, right? And uh, yeah, maybe there is. I don't know. I think, plateaued. That's more, I think that's more of a compliment. It's like you're you're at such a high level where everybody puts rap at that high level. It's yeah. just like if you're a good quarterback, you throw a good football, right. they're going to be like, oh, you're like Tom Brady. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think it's more of a compliment in my eyes. Yeah, maybe yeah. you know. I, because I get, you're being compared to such a sure, no, no. But figure. like when I first started, oh, when, when you I first, first started, started, they used to say that a lot. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you know they don't do that now, <laughs> <laughs> but but I remember like you know just like Bulaya. So, uh, I remember being so envious of that guy. Like I already was in the comedy business for a while, mm-hmm. and I thought I was going to be the next guy because yeah. you heard about like how it goes in waves, yeah, right? Yeah, you got to ride that wave. Right, so I thought, you know, uh, I was the next guy, and I saw Bulaia take off. I used to be like, wow, check this guy out. And he doing stuff that other comics did. It wasn't original. Mm-hmm. He was doing something that was original. He was doing TV, doing some outrageous stuff, which made me laugh. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, his taglines, like, you know, better than boy. That's, mm-hmm. you know, that was from rap. Yeah. So like for me, in my mind, I always thought if he doesn't evolve, it's going to plateau. Yeah. So you got to, your know, character got to kind of evolve for a time. And, you know, so that was a moment. And I just remember like, as soon as that wave come, I'm going to catch them. Mm. And I'm going to try to stay on them as long as I can. Yeah. And for me, 
already was in the business for a while. And once I got that wave, I was just kind of like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I just kind of wrote them. Wrote it all wrote the way to shore. For, for a good 20 years, right? I know. Just, that's some big wave. Uh, yeah, that's just, like in nice. Portugal or something. Yeah. I know. It's, 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 uh, uh, you know, it's so crazy. Like, sometimes I feel like, you know, uh, I could easily go back and do it and like really focus. And I love doing it, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, then I'll be surprised that I do. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, T Comedy Tour uh, 2022 no, coming, coming up. No, it's coming. It's okay, coming. okay, okay, okay. I want to do something. I'm going to do something uh, to encourage local people. I'm gonna, so during the pandemic, I, uh, I, sh- I shot a comedy special in Utah in front mm-hmm. of. A howly audience, yeah. right? Dry bar comedy. Yeah. So if you go on dry bar, you see that they have like hundred million subscribers, and wow. it's the biggest platform for clean comics. Mm-hmm. So I was invited, like last February, so that special could come out like at any moment. Oh wow! Yeah. So while the pandemic was happening, I was doing stuff here and there. You know, just kind of staying on stage it was a good time for me to like. You know, because I was running for office, mm. and then I got into office. It was a good for me for disconnect. So uh, we filmed this special, and then because, you know, we still kind of in the lockdown and cannot do shows, mm-hmm. or if you can do venues, or if you can do venues, uh, you know, it's still limited, right? It's like 500 seats. You cannot do more than 1,000, right? Uh I was like, maybe after, you know, that special comes out, maybe like in February, then I'll do a, a tour called Laugh, for Allah, Laugh with Aloha. So that's why, you know, I'm, you know, currently um, putting together the package. We're going to do a statewide tour. And then, uh crazy thing is, like, I wish all of this, these specials, that's being filmed this movie that's out right now a little surf hotel yeah, that's on all streaming that. formats right it's on netflix yeah okay. uh, no it's on uh, amazon prime okay okay i got so, that I'm go check and youtube out. and stuff like yeah. that so you know all these things should have happened to me when i was 33 <laughs> <laughs> but it's at 53 where you know I'm, i got i filmed a comedy special yeah <laughs> i did this movie as the lead i'm a city councilman so like uh, I'm in a really cool place. Like at any moment, I can take a shift and go. Yeah. I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. That's why if you go to my website, augit.com, you'll see that you can go look at what I'm doing on the entertainment side. Yeah. And you can also see what I'm doing on the city council side. And on the top, saying you can serve your community and still do lo- still love doing what you love doing. That's I awesome. think it's so important, right? Yeah. To not change, but you know, Evolve. become a better human yeah mm-hmm. evolve yeah, yeah. exactly keep, keep true to who you are but keep you know progressing and making moves yeah, yeah. so yeah. so I think a lot of people want to <laughs> know how was that transition going from comedian to politician and like why did you decide to do that good question uh, I was inspired by you know your former leader Mayor Billy Kinoy yeah. uh, and my daughter my daughter runs a nonprofit called Brave Hawaii Brave is an acronym to be respectful and value everyone. She did it after she was bullied. Like my kids got bullied because dad was in the public eye and was yeah. easy for the kids to, you know, pick on all my children, right? But mm-hmm. they're strong, they're resilient, and I listen and I and I care, right? Um, she inspired me because she said, hey, I want you to come out and, you know, talk about your life in schools and help me with this bullying program. And as I was doing it, I really found myself being drawn into like how things are so different and still bad. Mm -hmm. Like I grew up, you know, in public housing, never have that much, but like, how can it be worse now? Mm -hmm. Right. So Mayor Kino gave me an opportunity to come work with him. And then a lot of people criticize him because, wow, you got a comedian coming in to yeah. do your programs, working for you. So for me, man, I was like, hey, this guy giving me an opportunity. I'm going to bust my ass. I'm going to show people that. You have the work ethic. Correct. Yeah. So we went out. We did all these coups. Went in, you know, on the big island. 
And then the lieutenant governor saw what I was doing. So when Billy's term ended, Lieutenant Governor Shan said, Sui said, hey, why don't you come work for me? And as I was going through that process, I thought, wow, serving the public is pretty awesome. It's intimidating, and I, though. And at the same time, bro, I'm like, I was being, I was getting, I was getting hard for me, right? When you see so much pain, right? Hard. And, you know, as a comic, I got to block all that out. Mm-hmm. I try to find comedy in the craziness, in the danger and the stupidity. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find it anymore because there's so much needs. And then my daughter said, why don't you use your talent and go do something in the community? And I knew people was going to criticize me. I knew people was going to say mean things. I knew people was going to attack. But like my heart was in the right place, right? Yeah. And early on, early on, uh, it running for office validated a lot of things I did the last 30 years, believe it or not. Uh, you know, when you're on stage and you're making people laugh and you ever get to hear the stories on how that night affected a person. So I used to hear, hear stories here and there like, oh man, you know, my I was having like the worst day. I came to your show, you made me laugh. Mm. I forgot my problems. Yeah. Or, you know, some people had cancer. Yeah. Some people were dying, and that was like their last things. I get plenty of those stories. I, I get, get chicken skin right now from you dude, saying that. I get guys who <laughs> said they wanted to kill their kids because their kids was gay, bro. And they saw the wow. DVD, and then, like, mind shift. Yeah. Right? Because one local guy I was telling another local guy, I understand, bro. I'm frustrated. You know, but that's your son. Yeah. That's your daughter. You know what I mean? Mm. And, uh, you don't hear that stories. So going out, knocking on doors, because I never have money. I never have a lot of money. A lot of unions and mm-hmm. special interests never support my campaign. Yeah. You know, so I had to go to old-fashioned way. I had to ask everyday people for help my campaign. Knock on doors. And I remember going to Mililani. Everybody told me, ooh, that's a tough neighborhood because of the ethnicity that's mm-hmm. there. Plenty Haole, Japanese. Yeah. And I go... Those are the same guys that come to my show the last 30 years. <laughs> well, was it intimidating? Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, early on in my campaign, I went up to this one house. I knocked on the door, and this howdy gentleman came out. And he was like, I won't vote for you. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, I was like, how come? How come, sir? And he told me, with amazing sincerity, he looked me in the eyes, and he said, because I don't think you're ready to mess up the trust we have between each other. Mm. I seen your career the last 25 years. I don't think you're ready to mess that up with yeah. you, with me. And I was like, it, d- it didn't matter, bro, if that person was going to yell at me at the next house because I knew that I did something cool the last 30 years. You made a difference. I paid, yeah, it made somebody laugh. Yeah, I made somebody go, go hey, that guy work hard. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. he's not mean mm-hmm. you know he's not mean spirited he's not saying stuff that gonna make me feel uncomfortable he's just being honest yeah right and i needed to see that for me yeah i never look if i lost this is what i used to tell my campaign manager and he would get mad i go dude if i lose guess what i just made a hundred thousand new friends mm. that's my social media bro. knocking yeah. on doors are you right good or bad my name is Augie. You know, oh, I know you. I see you in a commercial, but I just made one new friend. You know what I mean? So I look at this adventure and I go, I get to represent an amazing district, right? And I still get to do what I love doing. Yeah. I'm not going to change for anybody. You're going to love me or hate me. It doesn't matter because I can always uh, do things from my heart. And if I'm wrong, I will be the first one to apologize when I wrong, right? I have no problem with saying sorry. You know, uh, when I make a mistake, believe me, I will do whatever I can to correct it. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think anybody perfect. But I have maybe, according to stats, maybe another 20 years on this planet if things go well, right? So I like make sure that in that 20 years, I continue to do the things that I did the last 30 and maybe do a little bit more 
and live the very comfortable quiet life maybe later on mm. you know i yeah. like be filipino i like have one yard <laughs> you know <laughs> i think in gonna, hawaii we don't want a yard I thought you were going to go to car route because a lot of people my age are going to talk about that car. <laughs> I like sit on my own lawnmower, right? And maybe go to maybe a house in Honoka or something. Oh, I've yeah, come like, Big Island. I love Honoka, right? Or up in You're Waimea. You and my stepdad can ride your riding lawnmowers <laughs> with, your, like, with your straw hat. Oh, yeah. On there. Waikiki. You know, it's Waikaloa, wherever. Yeah. I just like be able to... Go outside my house and go cut my grass yeah. and a lot more. Is it, okay, is that a dad thing? Because I swear, my <laughs> dad, he loves, right? Like, just cut the lawn, lawns like two inches off the ground. Like, he's he's out there, proud. rain or shine, on that <laughs> riding lawn more. Dude, I cannot wait to that day. <laughs> I cannot wait to that. Like, I envision, bro. I put it out there, like, hey, come on. Yeah, speak it into existence. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. I want a yard. I like go outside. Right, my lawnmower. Maybe you know, uh, get couple, couple cool dogs. Yeah, you yeah. Know, just that, bro. Simple. Yeah. Simple. Simple. You know what I mean? life. I love be that. able to, you know, take your wife out to dinner. Mm-hmm. Right. Hey, you know what I feel like doing? What? We'll go to Disneyland. <laughs> just put a plane to Disneyland. Not have to budget. Not have to. Simple, bro. Not yeah. looking. I used to think, I like everything in the world. You know. Not at 53, man. Yeah. I just want to be able to have peace, mm-hmm. talk story, uh, hang out with cool friends, maybe smoke a cigar once yeah. in a while, you know, uh, watch my kids do amazing things, you know, and that's it. Nothing, yeah. nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're on you your know? way. That's awesome. So, uh, so you're in District 9, right? Mm-hmm. Which is Eva. Yes, well, or it's right now they just redid the map, believe it or not. Okay. But prior to they doing the redistricting, um, it was uh, from Mililani Town down to Ever Beach Water's Edge. Okay. So 157,000 registered voters. Wow. So it's almost as big as Big Island. Okay. Bigger than wow. Kauai. It's the eighth, I believe, largest district in the state crazy big responsibility huge responsibility what do you think is the biggest challenge that they face i think for a lot of our residents is definitely quality of life right like it's hard making ends meet in hawaii half of our island and our state are live paycheck to paycheck i think like 42 percent um so you know we know we have a homeless problem right we need to build affordable so those are the things that, you know, I'm very passionate about, you know, um, making sure that, you know, we build so that your kids can afford to live here and, you know, make Hawaii their home. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the big thing for me, like, you know, um, watching our spending and, you know, people concerned about safety. So, you know, uh, I sit on the chair of parks and public safety which I am very passionate about because I grew up in the parks mm-hmm. and for police, for me, I grew up around policemen who gave me great advice when I was boxing. You talk about mentors and mm-hmm. uh, people that influenced my life. Believe it or not, uh, policemen, you know, so when you see all these things about, of course, always going to get bad people, no matter where you're at, no matter mm-hmm. what job you do, always going to get some bad eggs, but there are good people lot of great people and i was around good police officers so when they endorsed me i was so excited because i uh i appreciate what they do you know uh, the good ones yeah yeah. the good ones just gotta look for the good if you if you look for something bad you're gonna find it yeah and you look for something good i'm sure you can find it as well yeah so so what do you what do you plan to do now as council member like what are some like steps that you want to take and like to, to accomplish those. So, things. like, um, right now, Which, you know, we're trying to find um, land in my district where we can um, build affordable housing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, of course, you know, because, you know, we need help in our parks because we don't have the funding. We're short of staff. You know, one of the things I did 
was uh, I said I was going to meet with every single neighborhood board member because the neighborhood boards are like the spine of every community, mm-hmm. right? They know the, the challenges and they represent their neighborhoods, right? And for me, I felt like I need to go and build a relationship with these guys because I'm going to be working with them for the next three years, right? And trying to find partners, not finger pointers. We don't need that. We need people to find solutions, right? So one of the things I did early on was put in a resolution in city council asking the city to give us a schedule on when they cut the grass because we know they don't do it regularly because it's a five-man crew that goes uh, from from Waipahu down to Waianae. Mm -hmm. So like every couple of weeks, right? So when we know they're not going to be there that week, maybe I can ask nonprofit churches, you know, small businesses, hey, why don't you come and help me? Go, we'll go cut the grass or we'll go clean up the area and take back our communities, building mm-hmm. strong communities. You know, I know it's not our job. Get people go, well, it's not your job. But who who going to do them then? Yeah. We're going to wait? Yeah, I don't like not waiting. Me, then who, yeah. yeah. So if I can get help in a community and I can get people to uh, be inspired to make a difference, shoot, there's no bad in that, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I think taking back our community is important, you know, community watch, community adopting the park. I think it's so important in this day and age where money is tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need all the help and support we can get. And that's why now more than ever, it's so important for us to support local. Yep. Support local businesses. 100%. You know what I mean? So that we can help each other thrive. Yeah. I was gonna go real local. Drive. Yeah, drive. drive. <laughs> yeah, you do have a drive in a traffic. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, that that's awesome. So that's kind of your your dream, like what you're trying to accomplish. How you you see Hawaii, just like these communities, is being built up and making it better for the future generation. Yeah, 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 and get so much inspiring leaders and so much people in our communities that love, you know, our area. Mm-hmm. And we can make a difference. Yeah. You know, uh, I believe that. So I'm optimistic, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And that um, if you don't vote, you should vote. Yeah. I, I voted on the Big Island, but if I voted here, I would have voted for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that no, But <laughs> like, you guys have to, if you guys like see change, there's a lot of people that talk about change, yeah. right? Or they're mad at the current situation. Yeah. And you got to get out and vote and you got to ask your friends and your family to do the same thing yeah. because that's how you first make that movement to like a real movement. Yeah. Right. You get so the guys true. there yeah. out, Yeah, you know, uh, and bring, bring in some new blood yeah. with new ideas. Yeah. So vote. Yes, listen to Augie, everybody, <laughs> and just, you know, a little anecdotal thing from my perspective. And, like, I, I'm, like, a millennial, you know, so I didn't think about voting. I voted for the first time last year awesome. in my entire life. I'm 28. So I, I never saw the importance of that. But, you know, as you get older and you see these problems firsthand, you talk with people and you meet people like you and you, you see these local people trying to get into positions of power. It's inspiring. So like people like you, people like Uncle Billy, like you guys inspired me to vote, mm-hmm. you know? Awesome. So I, yeah, first of all, I want to thank you for doing that. But also I want to encourage, you know, young listeners to, <laughs> you know, make your voice heard. Uh, don't just post selfies on Instagram. I, I, I love social media and I hate it at the same time yeah. because there, there's so much good and bad that can come from it. But I, I believe we should leverage it and you know, use that, use our platform to, to share about social causes, about, you know, elections and stuff yeah. like that. So just, just want to, you know, get that out there if you're listening. If I you're, and so all the guys young. my age <laughs> vote because yeah. that's a guys too. Like, you know, uh, they just so busy with life that they don't make the effort to do it. So yeah. I want to encourage you guys. It's never too late. It's never too late. Yeah, never too late. Go vote, register. And they're not yeah. going to come looking for you because you didn't register. Just <laughs> register yeah. to vote. Okay, awesome. So uh, last question be- okay. before we get into the Instagram questions because uh, I got some good ones here. Awesome. Uh, would you want, this kind of loaded question. Yeah. Would you want to be known as a comedian or politician? Hmm. That's easy. But I don't know if I like both. 
I just like be known as, you know, a guy that cared, loved, uh, appreciated people, uh, took care of his family. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Nice. With the politics stuff, you know, I've only been in it for nine months. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. digging it now, but I might not like it in a couple of years. And like yeah. I said early on, you know, and I don't like something, I just leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, with comedy, it's blessed me to do a lot of things like taking my kids, mm -hmm. sending my kids to school, you know, uh, giving them the opportunities that I never have. So... If I had to answer that loaded question, I would say uh, a comedian. Comedian, yeah. Yeah, that cared about yeah. people. But uh, but above <laughs> but above all, just <laughs> a good person that you know yeah. made a difference. Yeah. 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 It's Augie. Yeah. Oh, no. Just Augie. <laughs> just Augie. Augie. Not 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 the T. Just Augie. Uh, yeah, I know, but <laughs> dude, people found out what my real name was in in the in the through because I ran for office. Yeah. I think the reason why I lost in the primary is because nobody knew, like, oh, my name was Augusto. <laughs> oh, his name is Augusto? Wow, I never know that. But, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. My dad used to always hate when I, you know, I don't call you Augie T. Use your last <laughs> name. You know how local families are. Yeah, like, yeah. How come you don't use your real last name? Why are you going to use T? <laughs> yeah, so. That's funny. Uh, okay, so let's get to Instagram questions because we're coming to the end. Um, so, JC Shima. He mm -hmm. he wants to know about Bill Thirty Four. Are you familiar with that? No. Uh, is someone, okay, is it on a state side or city side? Like, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't. And you don't. I guess you don't need to have a stance. But I think they just <laughs> want to know your opinion. Um, so this one is relating to commercial activity at public parks. Oh. What what he told me was that okay, so they're that trying bill. to shut down yeah. surf schools on the North yeah, Shore. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is all in discussion. Both bills, thirty four and thirty eight, is mm -hmm. almost similar. But we are looking at. Uh, really trying to find a balance. The challenge for government has always been we're not able to enforce, right? Mm -hmm. So I think things would have been a lot different if we had people enforcing those rules that was already in the books, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people abuse it and there's good people that follow the rules. They right? get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that is a work in progress. Both bills are similar. Uh, it comes to my committee and, you know, I would love to see a balance, meaning mm -hmm. we make both sides happy. Yeah. You know, uh, so that's that's my take. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I guess that's possible by just regulating certain things. Well, you know, if you're passionate about things, um, you got to testify. Go mm -hmm. testify. Yeah, yeah. I think it's important your voice heard. to let you, yeah, your voice be heard, yeah? Okay, yeah, that, that's awesome. So Thanks, JC. Yeah, JC, mahalo for the question. And this one is actually uh, just... Not even a question, but uh, Ha'ahel. Okay. It's actually my, my sister-in-law. She oh, said, awesome. thank him for standing with the overwhelming testimonies <laughs> from people of Hawaii in regards to the mandates. Yeah. I think people really appreciated that. Yeah, no. Uh, I ran because you're supposed to listen. Yeah. Regardless on your views or your stance. You know, mm -hmm. I told people, like, I got vaccinated. I have a mm -hmm. senior mom. And I travel a lot. I just never, like, go through the headaches. Mm -hmm. Was I worried about maybe growing a tail? Absolutely, <laughs> right? Uh, so for me, it was just a matter of uh, was going to be okay, okay in my whole family. Like we had a discussion because, yeah. you know, my wife and my daughter and my mom, I got, we don't know. I'm not a scientist. So I had to protect my mom. Mm -hmm. So we decided we we're going to take the vaccine but i understand like dude i would never ever force anybody for doing anything yeah so for me what i saw and heard was like those people that's out there protesting they have a voice too they should be heard mm -hmm. and i honor that you know, and I wanted to make sure that people understand that like, it is choice. Yeah. And I respect you for standing up for what you believe in. Yeah. I think it's super important, but that's why 100%. we live in America. Yeah. You know what I mean? It like, it's important to be allies, not enemies. Yeah. I think know, we forget sometimes there's a common enemy, which is the, the virus, not, not each other. Dude, believe it or <laughs> not, there's some people uh, that believe got to get 
government officials, I don't want to say who, uh, they believe they're doing the right thing. You know, uh, do I think you got to force it on people's throats? No. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree. I think people should be able to choose, <laughs> especially when there's so many people being affected by this. You sure. know, fa- friends, family members losing their, potentially losing their job. It's so sad. Well, you know, the thing is like, man, I think at some point, you know, we got to learn how to live with the virus. Mm-hmm. You know, like respect it maybe. Yeah. Even like, well, you know, that, that's, that's why we have social distancing, correct. mask. Yeah, I, I agree. You have options. Yeah. You have options. Yeah, exactly. You know, some believe in exercising. Go exercise. Yeah. Do what you got to do, you know. But Take hit. zinc, vitamin D, correct. B12, all that. But you have a choice <laughs> if you like do them, you know. Because yeah. there's a lot of family members that didn't. And mm-hmm. they, look, we still cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's because I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, I'm not, you know, come house, you never get your vaccine. <laughs> Stupid. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks uh, again. Just, I think people <laughs> like that. So, I actually, I would, I would just ask this extra bonus question. Bonus question. Derek Canary, she had one last week too, but, you know, hey, she's she's a fan. So right on. This last, What's her name? Uh, Dari Canary. Dari I think, I think Canary. I, that's the Instagram handle. But I think it's awesome. Darian. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, how do you manage your time between being... being how do you manage your time between radio personality and councilman? That's good. That's a great question because, yeah, I still do radio. I still do comedy. So for the last 30 years as an entertainer, I never had to live by a calendar. I got to live by a calendar. Mm-hmm. I know you talk to my chief of staff, yeah. right? Just making this happen. So I have now two wives. <laughs> I really do have two wives. Yeah. I did comedy on this, but like... You know, my wife that controls my family time, make sure that, you know, uh, when I'm not doing public servant, when I'm being a public servant, on, I'm, you know, am I present in ho- at home? That's important, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then with the politics side, you know, I have a chief of staff that makes sure that uh, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I the laws of the city and county of Honolulu that I'm, you know, I'm honoring that. And then what I do in my free time is, you know, what I've always done. So I've learned to live by calendar and, and try to be super disciplined, which is hard because I am like ADHD (laughs) and, (laughs) you know, like I'm a maniac, you know, I tell myself, okay, I go sleep at nine and I'm watching Squid Games oh, till like 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, we talked about that last episode. Right? Uh, it was good. Uh, and then I got to get up at like 5. And like, yeah. I'm like, man, I wish I slept. It's the, it's, it's the, oh, one more episode, one more episode, yeah. one more episode. Yeah. We keep telling ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm trying to be disciplined. I'm trying my best to uh, uh, really work on my time management. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think we, we all struggle with that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even have kids or a family, but I still <laughs> struggle with that. <laughs> I try to balance my time with work and fantasy football. That's the hardest thing. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. Awesome. So, so um, last thing before we uh, close up, I think we're about an hour in. Uh, last time I, I forgot to time it, so <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. So I got the time now. Uh, I, w- I want to do a business shout out, like Shoot. a local business shout out every time we do a podcast just because we, we need some love for the local businesses. So uh, I don't have a feed here. I'm like, uh, I'll, How we'll, do it? Yeah, let me do it. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe hold it. Yeah, you hold that. Okay. Yeah. So, ho baga is cherry. Scented. <laughs> oh, ho baga is cherry. <laughs> Scented. So this is from Candle Collective Hawaii. Sub Candle and, Collective And uh, Shelby's Hawaii. actually a, a cla- not a classmate, but I went to school with her at Kaiser my senior year. And, oh, awesome. Uh, you know, she's a mother, Wahine owned. Uh, so that, that's a gift for you. Oh, thank you. And then we're going to... I was going to try to spell them. <laughs> yeah, we're going to post these uh, with the episode that comes out. So every episode we do a giveaway. Nice. Just, you know, get, get some... Some local business, some support, and right the cool thing about these candles is the like her de- uh, the titles of these candles, the names of these candles. You had me at Chihu, oh, you had me, me at Wego. You can, you can read them, awesome. yeah. And then I, I drive it. in uh, yeah. uh, H1 oh, my- westbound traffic oh. at 5 p.m. for you. Oh, what is this like? Uh, what is it? I know it's not a. It's like fresh, freshly scented. Hmm. 
This is perfect for my car. I'm afraid I might not blow out the candle but by the time I leave the car. Because you know how your car smells like feet? Yeah. Yeah, and food. Feet and food. Feet and food. Yeah, no. Let me, let me oh, get this over here. It smells great. Yeah. So, Ooh. Candle Collective Hawaii. Candle Collective Hawaii. Yeah. Go get them, you guys. Support local. Yeah, ho bugger is cherry. Ho bugger is cherry. <laughs> And then we got some other ones. Awesome. Yeah, so go check them out. They have really funny uh, names for all these candles. Right on. Yeah, uh, so I think that's about it for the podcast. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on and you know, speaking your mind and sharing your story with us. I mean, yeah. you, you're you're a local figure, you know. Even maybe uh, I, I remember you know seeing you growing up. I'm sure my parents probably <laughs> know know more about you than I do, but. Yeah, I think it's it's important to respect like the people that paved the way for my generation. So that that's you. Awesome, so, man. Mahalo. No, I get guys that yeah. you know uh gonna do probably more because we're doing this because they're inspired by what you're doing and maybe inspired for what I did the last thirty years and that's what we wanna do. Like I always tell people and kids when I go speak at school, if you see something, what you gotta do is and you admire that person or that something, do them better. Mm. Just do them better. Yeah, but not in a competitive way. Yeah, just like do them better. A, we can all, we yeah. can all succeed We have at the enough same time. for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Awesome. Okay, well, mahalo, Augie. Thank you, brother. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time on the Hawaii Verse. I mean, you will hear me next time on <laughs> yes. the Hawaii Verse podcast. Remember to aloha everybody and, you know, be kind and all that stuff. So yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Ahoy ho. Ahoy ho.